The CIA has done some truly weird stuff. What's up, turds, nerds, freaks, and geeks, and all that's in between? It's me, your girl, Daisy Dame. Welcome to, or welcome back to, my channel. I'm genuinely blessed to have you here. Today we're going into the CIA and what their purpose was originally and what they actually ended up doing. Because the CIA was created for a very specific reason, and it ends up that they had many a different strange things happening. The CIA has been subject of many controversies both in the outside of the United States and within. Tim Weiner accused the CIA of covert actions and human right abuses. Mm. Jeffrey T. Richelson of the National Security Archive has been critical of its claims. Intelligence expert David Wise faulted Weiner for portraying the duties as a dobbering old man rather than a shrewd professional spy. He knew and was refusing to concede that the agency's leaders may have acted from patriotic motives or the CIA ever did anything right. There was claims made in Wiener's book that has described it as a 600-page op piece masquerading as a serious history. Now, many of the CIA's controversies are no surprise, especially the domestic wiretapping known as Project Mockingbird. To those beautiful people who are so innocent to think that our government is trustworthy, please listen closely as we move forward. In the late 60s, at the height of the anti-war movement in the U.S., CIA Director Helms received a message from Henry Kissinger ordering him to spy on the leaders of the groups requesting a moratorium on Vietnam since, 16, since 1962, three successive presidents had ordered the director of CIA to spy on American. So for anyone thinking the CIA may not do this or that, well, just take a moment and listen. The CIA has been called into question for, at times, using torture, funding and training the groups of organizations that would later participate in killing civilians and other, other non-combatants that would try or succeed in overthrowing democratically elected governments, human experimentation, and targeted slayings and assassinations. The CIA has also been accused of whistleblower controls, which has led to, which has led to waste and fraud. During Bush's year in charge of the CIA, the U.S. national security apparatus actively supported Operation Condor, operations and right-wing military dictatorships in Latin America. According to author John Dingis, author of The Condor Years, The New Press, 2003, documents released in 2015 revealed that the CIA report dated April 28, 1978, that showed the agency by then had to, had to acknowledge that the U.S.-backed Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet ordered the assassinations of Orlando Lelatier, a political leader opponent living in exile in the United States. The Institute on Medicine as a professional and nonprofit organization, Open Society Foundations, reviewed public records into the medical professions alleging complicity in the abyss of prisoners suspected of terrorism in the U.S. in custody during the years of 9-1. When the reports founded that the health professionals aided in cruel and degrading interrogations, helped devise implement practices designed to maximize disorientation and anxiety so as to make detainees more malleable for interrogation. They also participated in an application of excruciatingly painful methods such as force feeding of mentally competent detainees, carrying hunger strikes, and more. Medical professionals were often used at these black sites to monitor detainees' health. Whether or not the physicians were compelled is an open question, and maybe it was so compartmentalized that they truly had no clue as to what was happening. And we do see this many a times within the government, where things are so compartmentalized that 
there's much confusion. Again, we saw this with Astro World, so that when time for blame comes around, oh, they just conveniently don't know where to point the finger. So basically, the CIA has been up to some pretty shady things. Many of you know about the CIA's recruitment of certain um, people. <laughs> In 2014, the New York Times reported that in the decades after the World War, it, the CIA and other U.S. agencies employed at least a thousand N as Cold War spies and informants, and as recently as the 1990s, concealed the government's ties to some still living in America. According to Timothy, the CIA's central concern in recruiting these people was not so much the extent of criminals' guilt as likelihood as the agent's criminal past could remain a secret. Recently, we pondered over whether Ashton Kutcher could be a CIA asset. This is due to how he speaks to the CIA, etc. I found that um, possibility curious, and it encouraged me to just show you guys some of the CIA's strangest activities. Project 1794, as a part of a mass declassification of number of secrets in 2012, the U.S. Air Force revealed its Aeronautical Systems Division had plans to produce a UFO-styled aircraft back as far as the 1950s, y'all. And they didn't release the reason why they needed one, or why they came up with the concept of it. The vehicle was supposed to reach speeds of Mach 4 and an altitude of 100,000 feet and a range of a thousand nautical miles. The brakes were put on the project in 1961. Remember, you heard it here first. The aliens won't come from above. They're coming from below. And let us move forward to Project MKUltra. If you think the government has too much power these days, just see what the CIA was up to in the 50s and 60s. The idea here was that the CIA would gain confessions from enemy combatants through unconventional methods like mind control. Throughout the experiment stages, test subjects were hypnotized and also drugged. Enjoy the video below as this hypnotized woman being instructed to pick up a venomous snake which clearly it was not, but she was out of her mind, so she had no idea the difference. Those of you who've already seen a good bit about this, you already know about Area 51. If you watch 90s sci-fi show X-Files, you'll know that one subject that comes up a lot is Area 51, an off-limits staging ground in Nevada desert, where the U.S. Air Force supposedly conducted classified alien-related tests. The area around it has become known as the Extraterrestrial Highway, which the classic show likely stretched the truth a little to its favor. Declassified historical, doc historical documents will and do note that the location has been used to test, listen to this, military vehicles and weapons. Just what kind is still classified, G. I wonder if it's those aliens who are ends if you get me what and aliens like I had stated before could it be real is it a true thing make sure to tune in next time for what the heck is Daisy talking about now <laughs> after this one comes pro after that comes operation paperclip President Harry Truman launched his top secret program after World War II to recruit scientists who had worked for Engemeneur to develop stuff for the good guys. One of its famous graduates, Werner von Braun, who apparently helped us get to the moon in 1969, he was almost awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, but was denied because of his past as an N. Isn't that curious the n scientists from germany helped us supposedly get to the moon first those are the most popular operations but what are the ones that people hear of less well i hope you're ready because we're about to look at some very strange things operation washtub if only sarah palin 
had been around in the 50s, she would have been all over this top secret program. In the event of a Russian invasion of Alaska, the FBI and the U.S. Air Force had a plan. Make ordinary average Alaskans into federal agent-like spies that could report back to Washington and survive in hiding from the enemy. For more on the program, there are further declassified documentation. Likely one of my favorites has to be Project Pigeon in 1944. Technology was so primitive during Dubba Dubba 2 that the CIA actually enlisted pigeons to conduct some of their operations firstly. So exactly what were they trained to do? Well, help guide their missile systems important. Help guide their missile systems. Researcher B.F. Skinner was hired by the agency to teach these birds a thing or two about defending our country. Unfortunately, there was never really any progress as the pigeons would just fly off course. That's 25000 down the drain for one of the stupidest projects in My American history. My second favorite would be Acoustic Kitty in 1967. In perhaps the most wasteful attempt to obtaining intelligence, the CIA set out to use the common house cat as a master of espionage. The results? Well, just as you would expect. Over $20 million was invested into Acoustic Kitty as recording devices were stripped of felines and even some had surgically implanted microphones, y'all. Sounds familiar. Sounds like Neuralink. But let's move along. But let's move Elon. <laughs> I mean, let's move along. So the antenna and batteries were in the kitty's tails. The goal was to release them around the Russian embassy to collect intel. Unfortunately, the first cat put into the field was run over by a taxi. And the operation was uh, dropped shortly after. Those poor kitties. Isn't that so quite curious, though, to use kitties in such a manner? The next is the Stargate project. This one is as, is quite important. As per usual, the CIA is always looking for any edge when it comes to collecting data. Everybody loves this data. It's big data, 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 data. So when posed with the prospect of studying psychic abilities, they threw in a measly 20 million to launch what is known as the Stargate project. Using self-proclaimed psychics, this project turned out to be a major failure due to some pretty piss poor results. I guess it really wasn't such um, a superhuman abilities and the government would be using them. Oh my goodness, y'all are not going to believe this one. This one is still ongoing. Okay, listen to that. Still ongoing. This one is Operation Gay Booty. <laughs> On more than one occasion, the CIA considered actually producing their own G. Pran. But not to be creepy, you guys. They said to have some. They said to have use communist leader lookalikes in order to change their people's perception of them. I guess that is um, freaking creepy. Especially in communist countries, these types of acts are frowned upon more than anywhere else in the world. The CIA last suggested to use this tactic during the CIA was last suggested to use this tactic during the second Gulf War using Saddam Hussein or Osama bin Laden. Fortunately, this went nowhere and we were all spared from some truly horrifying ish. And it's like, were we though? And why would this concept even be included as an idea? I don't know. And why is it still ongoing? Y'all, this is messed up. If the CIA are using one's accessible identity as a certain, you know, okay, you know what? I'm going to shut up because it's only going to get worse from here. Your girl is going to get in some trouble and I'm going to shut up. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is be advised that what we are seeing now could very well be something that we see declassified within the next decade or so known as Project Star Children or Project Trans America, who knows. 
Other human rights issues that are controversial include the case of Edward Snowden. However, the significance of human rights does not fall into this case regarding whether Snowden received his fair trial or not. Rather, human rights associated with Snowden leaks are regarding the types are regarding the types of documentation released. Snowden released a significant amount of information on the US government's surveillance program on its citizens. The Washington Post as well as foreign news reports. Particularly between or about June 5th, 2013 and June 9th, 2013. Classified information was published on the internet and in print by multiple newspapers including the Washington Post and the Guardian. They were marked top secret. The Washington Post and Guardian later revealed that Snowden was the principal source of the classified information on or about June 9, 2013. In a videotaped interview with the Guardian, admitted that he was the person who illegally provided these documents to reporters. Evidence indicates that Snowden had access to all these um documents in question. He accessed those documents and subsequently provided the documents to the media outlets without authorization of the U.S. as a violation. Thus, he gets in trouble. And furthermore, the documents included many levels of leaks of the National Security Agency, which is the NSA, electronic surveillance activities. The Snowden leaks have generated broad public debate over the issues of security, privacy, and legality inherent to the in the NSA's surveillance of communications by American citizens. The surveillance, the records include the White House and ODNI efforts to explain, justify, and defend the programs correspondence between outside critics and executive branch officials, fact sheets and white papers distributed and sometimes later withdrawn by the government, key laws and decisions by both Supreme Court and Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, documents on the total information awareness, later terrorism and information awareness TIA program, and earlier proposed a massive data collection on manuals of how to exploit the internet for intelligence, how to exploit the internet for intelligence. Kind of like Facebook, where you create a web of all the people who are connected to you, all of your interests, all of your likes, all the things that you love. Hmm. Collecting more data, more information, and thus privacy is non existent. Although the agency claims to be bound by the Constitution and laws of the United States, including treaty agreements and international obligations, the CIA has been involved in many controversies and downright illegal activities, including, again, the torture and human rights violations. This is a little of them, some foreign leaders, and covert paramilitary activity, as well as keeping their own secrets from Congress to find scandals involving the CIA and continuous operations of the spy agency 24-7 Wall Street poured over the historical and media sources as well as declassified Senate, CIA, and other agencies' documents. But rather attempts to reveal a variety of continuous operations, many of which ended up in thoroughly invested by Congress. From the agency's inception of 1947, it has had its hand in toppling of foreign governments and regimes that the United States deemed dangerous due to their communist nationalist leadings. Some of the leaders it has helped, others it has clearly destroyed. And I wanted to look at just a few more of their strangest, and then we'll move along. We already discussed Project Mockingbird. Again, we know that this had a hand in tapping civilians phones extraordinary rendition when 1995 till unknown extrajudicial transfers of detainees to another country for interrogation eesh extraordinary rendition is an extrajudiciary transfer of foreign national suspected of t to detention centers in other countries so that they can go about getting information from them in a lot worse ways 
I know these are supposed to be scary people, but imagine how scary that must have been. This goes right along with enhanced interrogation. From 2001 to 2009, question mark as in, did it even stop? Torture of all kind, meaning physical, sexual, and psychological. After nine, uh, dash, dash, <laughs> the Bush administration approved a certain program that defied Geneva Conventions, labeling the program with the euphemism enhanced interrogation, okay? And this was all the way from people who were suspected tees to innocent people. This included the worst of the worst. That's also quite scary. You may have already heard about black sites. This is 2001 till unknown, which means it's still going on. Secret prisons run by CAA on foreign soil, often used for enhanced interrogation. Oh my goodness, there it is again. On one site in Afghanistan, known as the Salt Pit or Cobalt, it was referred to as the Dark Prison or the Dungeon by prisoners. Detainees were kept in pitch blackness with loud music blaring. Oh my gosh, one past... This is wild. That is insane. So I think my point has been made, and needless to say, the CIA has been involved in some heinous stuff. And the actual inception of the CIA was the idea to collect information, to collect um, a central intelligence, right? But it seems as though they've done a whole lot more than ever expected. And things that would one might think would be outside of the realm of what they're meant to be doing? Or is this exactly what the CIA was created for? Is this exactly the entire time what they were meant to be doing? Either way, I wanted to bring this up because it kind of gives more credence to the idea that Ashton Kutcher could indeed be a part of this group or at least working with them in connection in some way. The shout outs and love notes alone are very much to um, take a look at and just really consider what this is about. If you guys haven't heard about these, what do you think about them down below? If you have heard about some, let me know which ones were new to you. I would really like to know. And if you would like for me to dive deeper into these declassified documents, you know that I love doing that so very much I really do and it's genuinely like no issue at all someone has to do it someone's gonna have to do it and yeah I I don't mind at all taking an extra look so make sure you stay awake stay aware stay well thank you guys so so much for hanging out with me and for all of you who are supporting um if you want to become a member the link is in the description down below for as low as two dollar holla There are plenty of spaces still available and that makes you on the High Council of Daisy. And when you are a part of the High Council of Daisy, well then you just get little extra perks, don't ya? I hope you have the best day ever. You are truly amazing. And oh my goodness, by the way, those poor acoustic kitties. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.